Hi, my name is Bertrand Dirk, and today we'll be discussing about what paroxysmal positional vertigo is. In short, it is called BPPV. So by the end of today's video, you'll have a clear understanding of the symptoms of what BPPV is, the cause, and a solution to help combat, manage, and treat BPPV. So what is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo? Now, BPPV is characterized by the sudden onset of vertigo episodes that are usually triggered by certain head movements. Now, vertigo is a subjective external experience of rotational movement. It basically means that if you suffer from a vertigo attack, what you will experience is that you will experience the environment around you actually spinning round and round. Now, this can happen regardless of any input from the environment. Hence, the environment can be completely still, however yet you are seeing the entire environment around you spinning continuously. It is estimated that vertigo patients are diagnosed with BPPV approximately 17 to 42 percent of the time and also has a yearly prevalence of 11 to 64 people per 100,000 per year. Now BPPV is commonly diagnosed with physical tests and on its subjective history rarely requiring further examination. BPPV is a dysfunction in the inner ear, specifically the auditive organs, which is detected in the inner ear. Now the auditive organs detect the gravitational and acceleration forces of our head during movement. And any impairment to these organs can cause an abnormal response to head movement sparking symptoms of vertigo, and even nausea and vomiting. Because of the low threshold for attacks of vertigo, and the severe nature of the symptoms, BPPV can be very debilitating for its sufferers. So what are the symptoms of BPPV? Symptoms can include vertigo, which is the external environment spinning around you, dizziness, which is the wooziness, the internal feeling that you feel, nausea, vomiting, and also nystagmus. Now what nystagmus is, is basically a rapid unidirectional beating of the eyes, where the eyes can beat from left to right or up and down. And this is often unnoticed to a sufferer when they suffer an attack. So what are the causes of BPPV? There are two main theories regarding the cause of BPPV, and both are regarding to the inner ear, which is the endolymph flowing through, this, through the semicircular canals of the otolith organs. And once again, it is a part of the inner ear. Now, the copulolithiasis model suggests that matter within the endolymph becomes attached to the copula or the sensory organs located in the semicircular canal. Now the canalylysthesis model suggests that there are free floating particles within the endolymph that are detected by the capillae. And this abnormal detection is registered and vertigo is then experienced as a result. There is a test called the dix hole pike test and the supine roll test, which is lying on your back and turning your head in certain movements, have actually been, detect have been developed to detect the faults in the posterior in horizontal or semicircular canal, respectively, which is again the inner ear. Now these tests are designed to create a change in the fluid dynamics and the detection of the endolymph in the otolith organs. Now, vertigo is experienced in a positive test and the therapist will observe the presence and direction of nystagmus, again, the rapid beating of the eye, 
And it is rare that the, se that the superior semicircular canal is at fault during BPPV. However, if it were to be, the Dixhall Pikes test would be again positive, and the ther therapist would observe an upward beating nystagmus of the eyes in patients. Now, in a lot of patients that we see, they experience all the symptoms of BPPV, but the results are often unclear when they undergo testing, or they may not respond effectively to the standard treatment of BPPV. Now, if you are a BPPV sufferer and have tried the standard approaches of treatment, however, these approach and treatments have been somewhat not effective, then in these patients it is likely that a different scenario and different cause may be resulting in your symptoms. And it is likely that the sensitivity in the central nervous system, and specifically the brainstem, may be the underlying cause. Now the afferent vestibular nerve sends normal information that reaches the sensitized brainstem. And this information can be wrongly interpreted as a threat, and thus vertigo can then be experienced. Now, so what are the treatments uh, for BPPV? Now, the standard treatment for BPPV and, um, is the Epley's maneuver. Now, this involves a series of positional changes that are designed to shift any matter in the semicircular canals into the inner ear so that they are no longer triggering symptoms. And this maneuver can easily be performed at home as an exercise once taught by a health professional. Hence, if you do suffer from true BPPV, Epley's maneuver can definitely help reduce and prevent future attacks from happening. However, if you have seen a vestibular therapist and have tried this form of treatment and it has not been successful, then another underlying cause could be resulting in your condition. And if that is the case, then we would strongly recommend that you do seek a headache clinician that are experts in vertigo or vestibular symptoms. Now, if this is the case and the Epley's maneuver did not help, then we would strongly urge that you do seek to assess whether your upper three cervical spine of the neck and more importantly, the brainstem is sensitized or hypersensitive to create your symptoms of vertigo. Now, if it is proven and deemed that your brainstem is the cause of these vertigo symptoms, then treatment can begin immediately. And the effects of the treatment to treat the upper three cervical spine of the neck and the brainstem can be highly effective at reducing or resolving these symptoms such as BPPV. So, hopefully from today's video you have a better understanding of the symptoms of BPPV, the cause, but also the treatment solutions to help manage, treat and prevent BPPV. Once again, my name is Bertrand de Dirk. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Thank you.